so you wanna be the king of games. But your matches all end the same. I've got just what you need. Feel free to SMD. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back with another episode of SMD, the quick and dirty way for filthy net deckers to no skill their way up the master duel ladder. Let's look at Utopia. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Looking for a place that anyone can upload Master Duel decks and get feedback from the community? Want to give opening Master Packs a try without spending real money? Want to know the gem cost of a deck before you commit to building it? Then check out www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's use Utopia. This is an Xyz-focused deck, and before you ask, yes, it is completely playable with no changes in the Xyz Festival. This is actually exactly what I've been using on stream for the past couple of days to farm metals. With that out of the way, Utopia is a strategy that centers around... Summoning Utopia. The newly released ZS Armed and Ascended Sages allow a Utopia summoned using them as material to add a rank up magic and a Zexal weapon from your deck to your hand. By cycling through rank up magic Utopia Force, Utopia Dragonar, and Leo Utopia Ray, this deck can make an impressively powerful board with a diverse array of negations and interruptions, all from a single rank 4 released during Obama's first term. Thanks, Obama. To facilitate these lines, we are playing the Onomat monsters, which may seem familiar if you were a scum-sucking monster about a year ago in Duel Links. These monsters make Xyz summoning look like Link summoning. Unfortunately, they come with a steep cost. Their cost. While there is a Utopia structure deck, almost none of this is included, and the cards that are are mostly at the rare slot and lower. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, the Master Duel Tax, 3 Max C and 3 Ash Blossom. After that, the Onomats, 3 Utopic Onomatopoeia. You can shave one of these if you're looking to save money. 3 Zubaba Bancho Gagaga -ga -ga Coat and 1 copy of Dodo Dwarf Go 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 Glove. This can go up to 2 if you shaved one of the Utopics. After that, we've got 3 Arm Sage and 3 Ascend Sage, followed by 3 Astral Topia. This card's a little bricky. Often it requires your normal summon because you aren't able to make an Xyz without using this as material. For that reason, many people are playing 2 or even 1 copy, but I think the effect is so good you probably should be maxed out. After that are our two Zexal weapons, Tornado Bringer and Pegasus Twin Saber. Pegasus Twin Saber is much better, but it's harder to equip to one of your monsters. Tornado Bringer is just generally a decent card. After that, we've got one Reinforcement of the Army, three Onomatopoeia. I can't believe how strong this card is, three Zexal Construction. Unfortunately, this is an easy removal from the deck. Usually, it's just additional cards you don't necessarily need, but you end up with too many cards in your hand at the end of your turn anyway. Yeah, unfortunately, it does not save you any money by cutting because it's an uncraftable. We've got one copy of Hyper Rank Up Magic Utopia Force, which allows you to overlay a Utopia into a Utopia Dragonair. Three Automata Pickup, which adds Automata Para to your hand. One Double or Nothing, important for a significant amount of Utopia Double Lines. Double Called by the Grave and one Numbers Protection. This is your search target off of Astral Topia, usually. Now, I'm playing one copy of Xyz Change Tactics as well. This is not a good card, and I would not recommend that you play it. A hundred times out of a hundred, Numbers Protection is going to be the better search. But it's very funny. Routinely, you can draw somewhere between five and six cards off of this if you get your Utopia Chain going long enough. And while you will take like 3,500 damage in the process and just draw into a bunch of cards you can't use, it's hilarious to watch the look on your opponent's face. Or at least imagine it. In the extra, we're playing Utopia Dragonar. This is the most important card in the entire deck. As a quick, you can detach two materials from this card. Usually it will have four. To special summon from your extra deck a number monster with a number between one and a hundred in its name. Utopia Ray is always treated as number C39, so that's your first turn target. On your opponent's turn, you can go into Hope Harbinger if you believe they are playing spell cards. Galaxy Eyes if you think that they are playing monster effects. And, shockingly, a defense position Baguska. That's right, this card is actually just as a thought. Outside of that, we're playing a copy of Utopic Future and a copy of Utopic Draco Future. There are a lot of scenarios in which you could get extra fours on your side of the field. Two Utopias. Um, realistically, you only need the one, but if you get interrupted, it's nice to have another in circulation. Abyss Dweller, uh, number S39 Utopia Prime. It's just an additional material for a long Utopia chain and draws you a card off of Xyz Change Tactics. Utopia Double is good to play around Infinite Impermanence. If you go for the effect of an Ascend or an Armed Sage equipped to a Utopia you control, and the Utopia is Utopia Double, and your opponent targets it 
it with something like an effect veiler you can double to make it with by going into a utopia on top of it gagaga -ga -ga magician is a little bit of cope it's for scenarios in which you go into the next card our zs copy of utopic sage and you're interrupted by a card that destroys it something like an on-field piece of negation while you're going second or maybe a gamma you're still able to make utopic draco future provided you're playing this in the extra but realistically i have much more often wanted just a generic rank four something like a tornado dragon in this slot the reason that i have one of them in here is it's available in the legacy pack so you might have just accidentally picked one up anyway and it's still pretty good and finally zs utopic sage searches a zs monster from your deck and special summons it which means you can get the armed or send sage in hands that lack them so with that out of the way let's see it in action our match is up against Sky Striker, and thankfully we have not only won the die roll, we are also just gifted a handful of anything we could ever want. Look at that, just beautiful. We're going to begin with a copy of Onamana Pickup. Now, Onamana Pickup is a weird starter for the deck. You don't really want to see this one as the first card in your grip because it turns off ZS Ascend Sage, which in order to special summon requires that you have no cards on your side of the field. Just something to keep in mind for hands that include them both. We're going to go for an Onamana Pickup here and go for a Gagaga -ga -ga Coach, bringing back the Utopic Onamana Pia, which can then summon the Dodo -do Dwarf Go 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 Glove from hand. From here, we can overlay these two into ZS Utopic Sage. We got to get the Ascended Sage into rotation if we want to go for the hyper rank up magic utopia force we'll trigger the dodo -do dwarf go 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 glove in the graveyard and then activate astral topia thankfully this is the last time we see the onomat monsters they have cost me so many takes now as i said astral topia usually is supposed to get numbers protection but i do a little trolling so we get Xyz change tactics instead and watch how powerful this card looks. We're going to go for utopia double what we want to do here is activate utopia double in sequence as well but unfortunately Xyz change tactics is a when you can so it can miss timing and as a result we have to activate utopia double to go into the utopia on a new chain which means there's a small percent chance that we can draw the double or nothing off the Xyz change tactics you kind of have to roll the dice if you want to go for maximum comedy we'll go for a number 39 utopia here draw an additional card off of the Xyz change tactics this is an ash blossom and this is pretty much all the interruption we can find off of tactics with the exception of numbers protection from here we're going to go into utopia prime just an additional material on this card we'll trigger the effect of the tactics and then fire off the hyper rank up magic utopia force then we will go into dragonar dragonar here is just fantastic we have two activations of this card once on our turn and once on our opponents we're going to begin with the activation on our turn we're going to use its effect in order to detach to and summon from our extra deck a copy of leo utopia ray now remember this is not a number monster but it is treated as one because of that parenthetical text right under its material count uh, hilariously this applies to deck building as well so you can't put in three copies of utopia ray and three copies of ultimate leo utopia ray we're going to equip a copy of ZW Pegasus Twin Saber here. This is a very interesting card. Uh, it negates monster effects, but doesn't start a chain. Uh, kind of the same way that something like Cerulean Skyfire would do so if you've ever played Sacred Beasts. We're going to go for a Gagaga -ga -ga Magician here, uh, just because we have already used all of the monsters that we want, and we just need something that's not a number in order to go into UDF. In reality, this could have been anything, but I don't want to burn something like an Abyss Dweller that I might be using later in the game if I don't have to. We'll trigger the effect of the Gagaga -ga -ga Magician to bring back a copy of this uh, Utopia Double in Defense position, just as a comedy joke. Uh, before we go for the UDF, uh, equip the Tornado Bringer, set a called by, and pass back to our opponent. They're going to begin with a copy of Reinforcement of the Army, and at Resolution, we know exactly what they're up to. They'll fire off a Pot of Desires, and now that I am getting a little afraid of that third spell in rotation, I'll Ash Blossom, and then after that, I will also activate Dragonair in case they have another spell lurking in the wings. We probably should have done this a little bit before, as soon as we knew they were on Striker, uh, but we will now be able to go into a copy of Hope Harbinger. Now, Hope Harbinger is a weird card. It negates spells, but it doesn't need to detach in order to do so. Its detach effect actually redirects attacks. Regardless Regardless, we are going to be able to attach the Hyper Rank Up Magic Utopia Force from the graveyard to this card because it was summoned by the effect of a Utopia monster. Our opponent's going to fire off a copy of a uh, Shark Cannon, and I'm confused as to why they're doing this until I realize, oh my god, they're just setting up for a huge engage. Okay. So they're going to go for a ray here into a Zeke that is not fantastic for me. Uh, we are going to have to negate that Zeke, but we have a multitude of ways to do so. We'll go ahead and negate it with the effect of the Utopia Ray. They'll activate the effect of, I think, 
Eagle booster? Yeah, on this card to make it unaffected, to which we will chain this Hope Harbinger. Unfortunately, I'd hope to save this for the end gauge, but looks like we won't be able to do so, and we have perfect knowledge of their hand anyway. They'll go for Rose. We'll negate that with Utopic Draco Future, and now that we're at a six chain, I remember that there is a Steam achievement for getting past a six chain, so I go ahead and fire off the Called by the Grave here, because later in the turn, of course, we would always be banishing this copy of Ray from the graveyard. So at Resolution, we'll get that Ray out of the graveyard. We'll go for UDF. We'll negate the Rose in hand. They'll uh, fail to resolve the effect of Rose. We'll go for the Hope Harbinger Titanic Galaxy. That will equip the Eagle Booster to our monster as material, and then, of course, the Zeke will be negated. Afterwards, they'll go into a Hayate, but oh no, they literally do not know what my cards do. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, to be fair, this never comes up. We'll go for Hope Harbinger here to redirect that direct attack into the Hope Harbinger, destroying the Hayate. They don't have a Ray Engraved, so they can't float, and the Pegasus Twin Saber can negate, because even though it's in damage, this does not start a chain. They'll pass back to us, and we'll max see. Uh, again, we do just a little bit of trolling. We draw for turn, and uh, okay, let's wrap this one up. So that's that. A super interesting, if not a little bit pricey strategy that loses nothing for entry into the Xyz Festival. See you next time.